Welcome back to New Record Day. My name is Ron. In today's review, we're going to be taking a look at these guys that a lot of you have been asking about for quite some time. These are a custom build of the XLS Encore that Mike Lundy of Uleum Audio sent over to us to check out. And the XLS Encore is a do-it-yourself kit that is offered by GR Research. All of the links of everything that we're going to be talking about today, they're going to be down below. Let's go ahead and dive in and have some fun. Before we begin, if you are into two-channel audio, if you are into do-it-yourself hi-fi, if you're into anything that is audiophile, hi-fi enthusiast related, welcome home. Hit the subscribe button. Make sure you hit the bell notification so you know when the next video drops. And uh, let's go ahead and kick things off with the disclaimer. I'm not being paid to say anything here today. I do not get any kind of a commission from Mike Lundy for anything that has to do with these speakers. And I do not get any kind of commission from kits that are sold through GR Research. All of my opinions, thoughts, et cetera, et cetera, they're my own. And nobody has influenced me in any fashion at all. There's a disclaimer, let's get started. Over the last few months, we have had a lot of fun with these what's inside videos. And in these videos, it's given us an opportunity to take a look at all of these production bookshelf speakers that I've been reviewing on my channel. And we're able to see what's being used on the inside of these speakers in terms of capacitors, inductors, resistors, you guys seem to really like those videos. It kind of peels back some of the layers and the curtains and everything is exposed. We have to understand and be fair about this. A lot of those production speakers, they gotta make a profit because otherwise that company that is selling those speakers doesn't work. That ranges from labor costs to keeping the lights on in the building, you name it. So when it comes to profitability with those companies and how much money is left over to get down to the granular stuff. We're talking about what cap sounds the best. I've had so many conversations with a lot of these manufacturers. Here's the reality. They're not thinking about it like that at all. And that might come as a surprise to a lot of audiophiles. Like, what, what do you mean, Ron? I mean, of course they're like sitting down and listening to all of these parts that they're using on the inside of their <laughs> speakers. <laughs> I'm laughing because that's just not the reality. It's really not. At the end of the day, a lot of these companies have a target, they have a budget, they have a team that they are paying to meet those goals, and what it comes down to is what parts work to meet that goal. Here's the thing, when it comes to do it yourself, and we remove a lot of the cost involved, that these production manufacturers have to take into account when they're making speakers, well, that's kind of a game changer. And one of the things that I really appreciate about Danny- Hey, everybody. Is unlike the example that we were just talking about, all of the parts, every single part, everything that goes into the kits, it is based on research and it is based on, yes, taking the time to actually try out a multitude of different components, parts, you name it, and Danny has landed on what he feels is the best of the best parts that he's able to offer to his customers for the price of the kit. And so all of these things, resistors, capacitors, you name it, even yes, down to the binding posts, all of these things start to add up. What I believe based on all of my experience with everything that I've heard from Danny is it all matters. And what might be one small thing by itself is no longer a small difference when everything is combined. Setting all that to the side, we're gonna go ahead and chat about these guys, which are a little bit of a different animal. You take the base, XLS Encore kit, which is around 250 bucks. And then you do the upgrade into the Sonic caps and Mills resistors and all the really good stuff, which gets you around $500 for the kit, give or take. Now what Mike is doing is taking it to another level. And I talk about this more in detail in the previous video. I'll leave a link down below or in the card above me. The question that I think I'm going to be able to answer is, so what? With all of the stuff that has been thrown at the XLS Encore, is it really just another XLS Encore with a pretty face? Or going this extreme, 
does it really actually make a difference? Let's get started. So starting with top end extension, this is a loudspeaker that if you have a recording packed full of resolution and you press play or you drop the needle on the record or whatever you got rocking and rolling, what you get is a lot of resolution in the recording. And what I like and what I appreciate so much about that peerless tweeter is it says, this is what you gave me and this is what you get. I'm not gonna elevate it. I'm not gonna bring it down. It's a like for like scenario. And I have listened to the encores over the years so many times and one of the things that I'm so impressed by this tweeter is if that symbol is cracking, then what you're gonna hear is a symbol cracking. But if it's subtle and it's relaxed, then what you're gonna hear is subtle and relaxed. It is a truth-telling tweeter. Not once in all of the years that I have listened to the XLS Encore and obviously been listening to these guys, do I find myself saying, okay, I see what's going on here. This is an elevated top end and that detail retrieval is enhanced in one way or another. No, I don't think that's true at all. And more importantly, I think that that truth-telling attribute of that particular peerless tweeter that is inside the XLS Encore is going to say, if you give me Bob's recording in his garage with his little Tascam recorder, well, I'm, I can't make magic out of that, bro. I mean, it's going to sound the same. This is not one of those situations where it's able to tell you some kind of a sweet lie. If you give it a crappy recording, you're going to be listening to a crappy recording. What you can expect is a tweeter that is going to be able to deliver the goods and it's going to tell you the truth. This is not going to be an exciting top end for the sake of being exciting. It's not going to be a warmish or soft top end for the sake of being soft or warm. This is a truth-telling top end. And for a lot of you folks out there, that's gonna be exactly what you want and what you're looking for. You understand the consequence is, you press play and it's not gonna be all fireworks, similar to what you might hear with something like the Klipsch RP600M where, yeah, for the first few minutes, you're like, wow, everything's popping, everything's exciting, but holy cow, when will it stop? That's not what the speaker will do. I kind of feel like it's a chameleon. I kind of feel like, depending on your rig and depending on your front end, starting with your source, starting with, if you're a digital guy, what your DAC is doing, starting with your preamp, your power amp, are you into solid state, are you into tubes, class A, class A, B. You know, all of that, I think, is actually gonna move the top end however you want it to. And so this actually gives the XLS Encore a lot of versatility, which is why I do think that it's a bit of a chameleon top end. It rides the line of here is neutral, and if you wanna manipulate it one way or the other, it's not that hard to do. And it's one of the things that I appreciate the most about the XLS Encore. Now, when it comes to upper mid-range, okay, this is something that uh, I think I'm most sensitive when it comes to upper mid-range, and I think a lot of audiophiles would feel the same way. So we're starting to talk about electric guitars. We're starting to talk about that snap on the snare. We're starting to talk about that initial hit of a cymbal where things can get like, wow, that is bright. That is forward. Please, let's turn the music down. Here's the deal. With the XLS Encores, you don't need to worry about that unless that is the way that it was recorded, especially with these guys, because like I said about the top end, the same thing is gonna be said over and over again as we make our way all the way down to bass. It's gonna tell you the truth. And so if we have a recording that is well mixed and mastered, then you are gonna be rewarded with a great sounding upper mid range. And so for me, as I've made my way through a lot of classic rock, anything that is gonna be heavy with electric guitars, anything ranging from Metallica to ACDC to Guns N' Roses to you name it, yeah, I can rock out with these all day long and not once do I ever enter any kind of listening fatigue. And that for me is a huge celebration. 
All right, let's go ahead and talk about mid-range. With Danny's designs, and I think Danny's thought process is he's more interested in the integrity of the music. And when it comes to vocals, male vocals, female vocals, what you get is a carbon copy of what is going into that speaker. And this is not going to be a Harbeth P3 ESR where we're utilizing resonance to give you a little bit more chesty or, I don't know, a little bit more bloom in the mid-band. No. No. If the vocals are thin sounding, then they're going to sound thin on these. And if they are chesty, uh, thinking about something like Louis Armstrong, that is exactly what you are going to get. And that is what you are going to be rewarded with. Again, similar to my thoughts on the top end extension, when we start talking about the mid range, and one of the things that I like so much about the XLS Encore is you can kind of move this in a couple of different directions based on the gear that you have before the speaker. So, hey, if you want a little bit more of that lit from within character, throw some tubes on the XLS Encores and you will get that kind of velvety mid-range that you're after. Now, on the other hand, if you just want it to be squeaky clean and you don't give a rat's rear end about tubes or velvety sounding or creamy sounding or any of that stuff, and you just want it like it is, well, then you can go in the direction of solid state. And guess what you're gonna get? You're gonna get exactly what you want, which is gonna be clean, precise when it's supposed to be. And when it is a bit more chesty, that's what you're gonna hear. It is simple to move it in whatever direction you want based on the gear that you have in front of it. I think that what I can appreciate so much about the performance of the mid-band and instruments within the mid-band of the XLS Encores, it's an honest presentation of what it should be. All right, so now as we drop into mid-bass, now this is gonna be getting into like chestier sounding vocals, deeper sounding vocals, and then obviously getting into kick drum territory and some bass guitars, the top notes of bass guitars, upright basses, some of the upper registries of an upright bass, congas, bongos, things of that nature. You guys know where I'm going. Paper cone drivers. This has been the mantra on my channel for many, many years now, and that is, it has been my finding, it has been my experience by trying out a bunch of different woofers and listening to a lot of different speakers that there is something to be said about how natural a paper cone driver sounds when it comes to mid bass and when it comes to bass, which we'll talk about in a minute. I want to hear texture and tone in the bass. And I have said this time and time again, I'm starting to bore myself, so I'm gonna make it quick. When you hear texture and tone in mid bass and you hear it in bass, it is difficult to go to a speaker that doesn't give you that same type of resolution and clarity. There are a lot of audiophiles that have never actually heard what texture and real tone in bass actually sounds like. I recently had a friend come over and he was checking out the Spatial Audio M3 Sapphires, which those babies have paper cone drivers in the woofers. And we were listening to Bad Guy by Billie Eilish. And there's this big bass drop that happens around in the song. Really, really deep bass. And my buddy was like, dude, is that like kind of distorted bass? Like it's intentionally distorted? And I said, yes, it is. And he's like, I've never heard that before. And I was like, welcome to Hi-Fi, my friend. Bust out your checkbook, you're gonna need it. I'm sorry. Not sorry. Now I tell that story, and obviously it's not about the XLS Encores, but the same thing applies, is that when you start hearing the detail and the resolution in bass, and not just the bass notes, what I call well farts, you can't go back. You have to hear it each and every single time because you're like, wow, I have all this detail retrieval on top and in the mid band, but then as soon as you get to the mid bass and bass, all I'm hearing is just bass notes. That ain't gonna work here at New Record Day. Sorry, those days are behind me. And so when it comes to the XLS Encores, paper cone driver, light on its feet, little to no stored energy, little to no resonance in the cabinet, guess what? You get texture and resolution in the bass. As soon as you hear what I'm talking about and what I've been talking about on this channel for so long, you will not be able to go back. You will just say, that's it. That is what bass is actually supposed to sound like, and it is addictive, and it is 
fun. All right, so now dropping bombs, getting into base town. Here's the deal. These guys do a decent job of dropping bombs. Comparatively, if we're talking about something like the Bucard S400 or even the Eclipse RP600M, the argument can be made and it would be totally valid that they're gonna be able to dig lower than these guys. They are low enough to where the integration with the subwoofer is actually pretty darn easy to do. And yes, of course, I'm gonna be talking about my favorite subwoofer on the planet, and I can promise you that as soon as you hear them, you will most likely agree with me, and if not, I will eat my hat in a future video. That's right, folks. The H-Frame direct servo subwoofers that are offered as a kit, again, by GR Research. Fast bass, clean, articulate, fast bass is where it's at when it comes to music. These guys, on top of H-Frame open baffle subwoofers, yeah, okay, bring it on. Bring anything on, I don't care what it is now. Bring anything on and put it up against that duo. Whatever it is that you have in mind, I don't even care about the price, they better have their big boy boots on because if they don't, these will kick the snot out of them. You're getting low, even into the teens with those H-frame open baffle subs. The bass is packed full of resolution, texture, tone, detail, no problem. They are fast as firecrackers and they hit like a freaking tow truck. So what you have at that point is really a world-class hi-fi system that it, it could be the end of the merry-go-round for so many audiophiles out there, it's not even funny. And now the last thing that we're gonna talk about is all about my favorite thing to talk about on this channel, soundstage. This is where, in my opinion, the parts being used, this is where I think you're gonna hear it the most. When we start talking about soundstage, we're talking about the performance in the room, and we're talking about how convincing does the actual stage sound, meaning, is it three-dimensional? Are you able to kind of just hear into the music? And as you hear into the performance, can you close your eyes and can you be teleported to whatever that performance is? And that, my friends, is where these guys at whatever Mike is gonna sell them for, I think 1,700 or 1,800 bucks, that's where the money's going. So all of these things that we have discussed, everything leading up to this, this is where you're gonna see the biggest gains, in my opinion, going from a base XLS Encore kit to getting the best of the best components, is that now we have an actual 3D presentation, holographic in nature, and the performance sounds like the real deal. Is there gonna be something better out there than these that maybe Danny offers? Yeah. I think so. As good as these are, and Mike did some amazing things with these, as good as these are, there is one speaker that I can think of in Danny's lineup that I think beats this, beats it. And that would be his latest studio monitor that I heard when I was in Texas with my brother. I'll leave the links down below. That tweeter on that studio monitor being open baffle on both sides, he's got a little ramp in the back, that leads to some really interesting spatial cues that this guy just can't do. It's not its fault, it just, it's not designed to do what that speaker can do. That studio monitor is about as close to the Anexoticas as you're gonna get in a small package. It's like a mini Anexotica. Thank you so much for stopping by today. We certainly do appreciate it. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification so you know when the next video drops. And uh, yeah, we'll be doing some sound clips with commentary with these bad boys and you will get to hear them for yourself. We'll see you soon.